Hello Wawa, this is Dr. Shafoff and Dr. Robinson here with another message from the Wawa Family Health Team. You may be thinking about wearing a mask or gloves when going out in public these days. Well, we're here today to provide some helpful information to help you stay safe. First of all, let's talk masks. There are generally three types of masks. That would be homemade ones, surgical masks, or N95 masks. Now the surgical and N95 masks are in short supply right now, so they should be reserved for you know, the healthcare settings where they're needed most, and we would recommend that you avoid buying them. In terms of homemade masks, public health guidelines actually state that they may be beneficial in those situations where it's a bit harder to avoid coming close to people, for example, being at the grocery store. So in that situation, you could consider wearing one. Something important to remember is that wearing a mask still doesn't prevent you from possibly being infected with COVID-19. In fact, wearing these kinds of homemade masks are actually more beneficial in protecting other people from your coughs or sneezes. So the best ways to protect yourself remain washing your hands often, keeping at least two meters of distance between yourself and other people, and avoiding touching your face as much as you can. Now we're gonna demonstrate how to wear a mask. This is important because using a mask incorrectly can actually put you at higher risk of getting infected. You may be bringing your hands to your face more than you would if you weren't wearing a mask. For example, if you feel you need to adjust it while wearing it. Now, it's important to remember that the virus enters your body through your eyes, nose, or mouth. So with that in mind, here's how to use a mask. First, wash your hands. It's important that your hands are clean before you touch your mask. Then, if it's a folded style like this, you want to open it up. And that way, make sure that it's covering your nose and mouth, and that it tucks under your chin nicely so that it stays in place. Then you're going to tie the straps, if it's the type that has tied straps, with the top one a little bit higher on the head, and the lower ones around the nape of the neck. This way it'll stay in place securely. If it's the type that has elastic bands, you're going to put those around your ears. But it's important that you make sure it's nice and comfortable at this point because you don't want to be tempted to move it or adjust it. While you're wearing the mask, you got to try your best not to touch it because you could transfer germs from your hands to the mask and then breathe them in. When you're done wearing the mask, again, you're going to wash your hands before you touch it. And Sean's going to do this in hyperspeed here. Ooh, ah, hands are clean. All right. Now you're going to start by taking off the bottom strap if it's the type with a tie and then the top strap, letting it fall away from you so that you don't touch your clothes or anything with that dirty mask. And you're going to toss it in the laundry. We have a link below in the description of this video helping you with laundry tips for making sure you clean those well. If it was one with elastic bands, obviously you just pull it off the ears. And thank you, Sean, for that demonstration. What about gloves? Does wearing gloves offer more protection than going around with bare hands? Well, let's take a look at this. You see, when nurses, doctors, and other healthcare workers wear gloves, we do it to prevent the spread of germs from one patient to another, um, which is why we have to change the gloves between every single patient. If we didn't and we wore the same gloves around all day, then we would run the risk of carrying those germs everywhere we go to every patient we touch. Now, the same principle applies to anyone else. If you wear the same pair of gloves all day long, then any germs that are on those gloves are gonna get transferred to anything that you touch. Whereas, if you wash your hands often, any germs that are on your hands get washed down the drain. It's important to remember that COVID-19 cannot infect you simply through touch. It has to enter your body through places like your nose, your mouth, and your eyes. So we're gonna have a little demonstration here. I'm going to the grocery store and I'm not wearing gloves. So as I start picking up my grocery items, I don't know who's touched these things before I did. So we have to assume that maybe somebody with COVID-19 could have touched these items. So to demonstrate COVID-19, we're going to use red paint. So let's pretend that all this red paint you see could be uh, virus particles. Okay, so somebody touched that banana, they decided they didn't want that banana. And somebody touched this cereal box and said, you know what, it's not my day for granola. And they put them back on the shelf. So now I'm coming along and oh, I want a banana, so I'm going to grab that banana, I'm going to put that in the cart. And oh, I want that, uh, that cereal box as well, so I'm going to grab that cereal box, put it in my cart. And now, the COVID-19 particles are on my hands. 
let's say I'm going along and I forgot something on the list and I need to text home and say, oh shoot, what did I forget? So I pick up my phone and I send off a few texts and then the phone rings and I think, oh shoot, I gotta pick up the phone now. Oh, you're right, I forgot. I gotta pick up the pork chops. You're right, absolutely. And now the COVID-19 particles are on my face and that's where it's the most dangerous. So that's demonstration number one. Let's do that same grocery trip, but with gloves on. Going along, I grab that banana, put that banana in the cart. And I grab that cereal box and I put that cereal box in the cart. And then my phone rings once again. So I pick up my phone and I answer, press the answer button. And I bring it to my face. And once again, even though I've got gloves on, I've got contaminated gloves and I've contaminated my face. I'm gonna contaminate anything else that I touch moving forward because from now on, we have to assume these gloves have virus particles on them. The point I'm trying to make here is that whether you're wearing gloves or you're not wearing gloves, there's always going to be some risk of picking up the coronavirus when you go out in public. And I'm not saying this to try and scare you, but more to show the importance of the things that you can do to make that risk as small as possible. And those things still remain. Washing your hands as often as you can, avoiding touching your face, and maintaining physical distance from other people. You don't need to wear gloves if you practice good hand washing, but if you still choose to, do your best to try not to touch too many things with those gloves, and when you're done with them, take them off properly, throw them in the garbage, and then wash your hands when you're done. Now I'm gonna show you how to take them off properly. So the, one of the important concepts is that you wanna have dirty glove, only touching dirty glove, and clean hand underneath, because I washed my hands before putting these gloves on, touching clean hand underneath. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab the base of one glove using the other glove and you're gonna pull it away from yourself so it slowly gets inside out. So now all the germs are trapped inside and you've got one clean hand here. You can now ball up that dirty glove inside of this dirty glove so it's nice and hidden away. And now with this clean hand, I'm gonna go under the dirty glove and start to pull it upwards Again, away from myself, so that now my clean hand is touching the inside of the clean, the, the clean inside of the glove. Now what I can do is go over to my garbage, use my clean hand to open it, and throw the gloves away. And when I'm done, I'm gonna wash my hands once more, just to make sure I've gotten rid of all the possible germs that could still have gotten onto my hands. Now that was a lot of information. We've provided some links in the description below this video that provide a few more details. But if you've still got questions, feel free to give us a call at the Family Health Team. Thank you, Wawa, for all of your efforts in protecting our community.